Hi, Pompo rides. However, not riding. But it is a motorbike related one. Anybody who watches the channel will have seen that um, recently I purchased the Aucci C6 Pro and fitted that to the bike and we had my first outing with that. Um, and a very, very good piece of kit it is as well. And if anybody hasn't seen it, watch it. I recommend you buy one for the money. Brilliant. I think £130 if you use my affiliate code, which is Pompo Rides, and I get a couple of quid as well. Um, so there was a bit of a problem with it which was and i mentioned in the video i didn't like how the bracket that came with it okay and the bracket that came with it is this one right so i've got the sat nav bar 12 mil sat nav bar which is what i used to have the garmin on and i wanted to put the Aucci in the exact same place however the problem that you've got is you have to mount this to the bar then you've got all this, and then this fixes to the back of the actual unit. And they give you what they call some security screws in here. And there's some little rubber grommets that, that sit inside here as well. Um, so yes, didn't like it. So I wanted to bin that off. So I've been working on, and I've done a couple of different test ones. Um, and these are some of my test results, right? Because I needed to make sure that these bits fit directly over the back of it. And then they'll also take the rubber grommets as well. Which resulted in... So we've done this as a prototype. And it goes onto the bar, like so. And clips around the bar. That fixes to the back of the... Aucci. We've got this here. As you can see on this one, what I've got is some little brass heat sink. So you sit them in, you get a soldering iron, get your all ready, get the little brass thing, put your soldering iron on top, just push it down to where it is. That accepts a six uh, M6. So, we've got that bracket, that clamps around the bar, and then you have two M6 Torx, fasten it up, and it's all good, and it's all fine and dandy. So, if anybody's interested in a bracket, reach out and let me know. Um, I did it just for myself, but I did put it on one of the um, Facebook groups I'm a member of the Suzuki V-Strom one, and three people have already said, oh, I haven't got a 3D printer. Uh, can I have it? Can you do me one? Um, yeah, I suppose. Um, so I've told them £5 plus postage, which is, I think, is more than reasonable. The printed out of ASA, which is a lot better than PLA material. ASA uh, is a bit better than ABS, and it's not the easiest to print with. So we've got to the printer there but you've got to have it enclosed and everything else it's a little bit more expensive but yeah i said i'd, I'd knock them out a five or a piece so anybody who's got a 12 mil bar uh and sat nav bar and they've got an aucci and they, they want one or any other ones if you show me the back one i could possibly knock you one of them up as well so i just thought i'd help everybody out and if you've got one right it's great and if you haven't got one go ahead and buy one using my code uh, and I'm going to quickly show you how I knock that up and, and what it sort of looks like um, on the computer. So I'm going to show you that. Yeah. So this is what I made it in, which is Tinkercad. Tinkercad's free and it's dead easy to use. It's, it's made for kids, I think, but don't tell anybody. Um, it's just the easiest one I've found of, of using. And I'm no expert. I don't pretend to be. And the easiest way of working with Tinkercad is just remembering that it's all about shapes. Everything is made up of shapes, and it's either a positive shape or a negative shape. So if we uh, break it all back down, 
I'm going to highlight all that and we're going to ungroup everything. We're going to, there we go. So this is each component of that part and you can see where we've got a negative and a negative and a negative and then a negative, right? You, you sort of get the, the picture. Uh, and then you've got negatives in there and negatives in there. And we can highlight little bits and say, do you know what, hide that bit. So then you can see the inside of there as well. So you can see the negatives that are there for the hole. So if you want a hole, you just do it like that, okay? That's as easy as that. And then when you're all done, you can then group it together. Which is what I've got there. And that gives you that. Okay, just to show you exactly what I mean, let's take a solid object here. Let's decide that we want that on its side. So you just literally move it around to 90 degrees. It's on its side. Actually, I want it facing me, so I'll spin it around again. 90 degrees. Okay, but I want a hole directly in the middle of that, right? And I want my hole to be, oh, I don't know. Let's have a look, that's 20. So I'm going to duplicate that which then gives me another one. There you go, I've got an exact replica of that, but I'm going to make that one a negative. I'm going to make that into all, and that's currently 20. I don't know why it's by 28, it's 20 up. So it's 20, right? Let's just make that to 10. We'll change that to 10. We'll change that to 10. And we'll change, there we go. So we've got our exactly the same right and i want that to be exactly in the middle now you could sort of try and fathom it out where it goes um but that'd be a bit hard work and it's yeah it's a bit yeah. so what we do is we just highlight them very quick and up here you've got this bit which is a line and we're going to say right and if you click up look at these handles it sort of shows you what it's going to do so i want to align it in the middle and I also want to hide it in the middle height there. And it's like, oh, I can't see my hole. Where's my hole gone? Well, that's because if we click on there and hide, you can see the hole still there in the middle, but we can't see it because it's not protruding out. And we're going to drag it out. Sure, that's a 10. So there's our hole. And if we put that back, we can now see I've got a solid object and it's got a hole in the middle. And all we need to do, if we tell the system to group them two together, there you go, it's put a hole in the middle. Right? And that's pretty much how it works. You just go around building up shapes and going, right, well, I want that to be that size. So you measure out your size, put it in, and you either make it a negative or a positive. It's not a Tinkercad lesson, it's just to show you very quickly what it's all about. Then, when we've done with Tinkercad, we then export it and have a look at what it looks like in the printer bit. Okay, so I've got a bamboo printer, so this is the software that comes with bamboo. And as you can see, we can move it all around, spin it all about, everything else. So I've just, uh, this is the one that we've already done, ready to print. So I've just imported this one uh, as it's come straight out of Tinkercad into here and as you can see this is a solid object now no guesses for what would go wrong if i just printed this um i'd have to thread it onto the bar I'd take the bar off the sat nav holder thread it onto the bar and then put the bar back on we don't want to do that do we so the whole point of this is we're going to split it down so quickly i can do i'm going to highlight that highlight the cuts move it mess about halfway you can sort of see that that it's going to cut it along that plane and we're going to cut it to parts perform the cut and there we go we've got our parts now if we go to our objects on here we should see that part there so that part there we're going to move that part over here and then we're also going to rotate it Spin it around 180. If I've got it wrong, you can just go up to here and put 180. And then we're going to tell it to auto put that on the bed. Now it's, when you say auto, it thinks where I think it's going to be. And I don't want it printing that way around. 
I want it printing the other way, so we're going to spin it back to level 180 again. That places it flat on the bed, ready to print. There we go. So that's flat on there, so we haven't got any overhangs. And that's how it's going to print. So if we're going to do this, it's going to print two off now. Okay, and we can print two of them off. And when we're ready, we go, okay, I want to look at some of the settings in there. And the settings that I did on here was, first of all, on the strength, I changed it to 50%. Um, and the infill to there, so that makes it a lot stronger. By default, that's usually like 15, so I made it to 50. And I can say ABS is a lot stronger, so we've done that. And we've changed it to gyroid. Uh, and then we've got the settings for the actual device, which are here, and we've set the temperatures here. So I'll preheat it to 250, uh, 100 bed. Leave it for 20 minutes, let it get nice and hot, then start printing. And then we're ready, we can go preview, and it should show us on here. Right, this is what it's going to print. And you can move it down and it'll show you each layer so you can see how it's going to build it up and you can look at that a bit closer if you want and that's how it's going to build up the entire print layer by layer and according to that it's going to take it the shorter two hours to do and it's showing you by that's literally what the print is going to do. And then when we're ready, we just click on print plate. So very, very quickly, I'm going to show you. There's the AUG unit. And I can't show it you working unless I start the engine. Because I have mine wired through the Thunderbox. So it's on the ignition only, right? So even if the ignitions is turned on, that still won't come on. So we'll have to start it. And there we go, we can see it kick into life. While that's booted up, we can look round the back. That's my bracket. On my 12mm bar. So you can see the 12mm bar runs along there that's the bracket on there going directly into the back of it and we've left it so it's still able to there's a, so there's still a little bit of movement in it for when you change the screen on the V-Strom you can then still adjust that accordingly so you can move it to there you can move it to there as you can see it's already kicked in with my map and the Steve Coogan that I've been listening to on Spotify let's just uh, turn that off for a poison myself turn the ignition off and there you go, it dies straight away. So that's it. That was just a quick show and tell of how I created the bracket for the AUC to go on a 12mm sat nav bar. So anybody wanting one of these, just get in touch, let me know. We'll sort something out. That's it for tonight. Hopefully I'll be getting out on the bike soon and we can get some more bike videos done. So with that. Turn up it, tatty bar, TTFN, see you again.